Well, howdy folks. This is lesson number six in my Cripple Creek for Clawhammer Beginner Series. And today we're going to take a look at adding drop thumb into Bare Bones Cripple Creek. And just like in previous lessons, we'll incorporate drop thumb with all the other embellishments that we learned. And if you haven't watched my previous lessons, I'd suggest that you at least watch the very first lesson on Bare Bones Cripple Creek. It'd be much to your benefit to watch that since that is the foundation for everything we do in all the subsequent lessons. And all these lessons are built up on the idea of a learning process that's stepwise and cumulative. So if you watch the entire series in sequence, I think everything will make a whole lot more sense to you. Anyway, with that, let's get started. Let's start with looking at some general aspects of drop thumb. You know, a lot of beginners are intimidated by drop thumb and the drop thumb technique. But I'll tell you this, if you can bum ditty, you can most certainly drop thumb. I teach drop thumb to my students in the very first lesson. I just don't see any need to wait. If approached correctly, it really is just a natural part of claw hammer. It's not some crazy difficult technique that's bolted on at some point later. It's not in the technique, it's in how the technique is taught to you. Well, let's define what drop thumb is so we know what we're getting into here. And basically, drop thumb is whenever the thumb plays an offbeat note on some string other than the fifth string. That's really all it is. Basically, you're playing a ditty structure, an eighth note pair, just like, say, you play string one and five, D A T. However, the thumb's going to land on some other string other than the fifth string. In most cases, the second string, but it could be the third string or the fourth string. It's as simple as that, really. Now, in this lesson, we're going to restrict the use and the nature of the drop thumb we do a little bit more. We're going to use drop thumb to create an offbeat note after the bum in the bum ditty structure. So we're going to play bum a ditty, and the drop thumb note is going to be on the uh after the bum, just like we did with poles and hammers and slides, actually. Also, we're going to restrict our drop thumbing to the second string. So when we play that bum a ditty, or you could say drop thumb ditty, the thumb note is going to be on the second string. And that is going to put us into a situation where the four note pattern that we're going to use, plain drop thumb, is what I call the one, two, one, five pattern. Those are the strings that we're going to play. So string one, we strike down with our finger, on the off beat, we place string two with our thumb. Then on the next beat, on the dit of the bum ditty or the bum a ditty, we're going to strike down on the first string again. And then again, we're going to play the second off beat note by pushing off the fifth string with our thumb. So finger, drop thumb, finger, thumb on the fifth string. Drop thumb ditty or bum a ditty. Or the one, two, one, five pattern is what we're going to play. Let me do that for you. Here's just a bum ditty on strings one and five. Pretty simple. Now, let me add in the drop thumb on the uh after the bum, so we get bum a ditty, one, two, one, five. So it's a constant string of eighth notes rather than a quarter note and two eighth notes. Bum a ditty, bum a ditty, or as I said, drop thumb ditty, drop thumb ditty. And by the way, I covered the one, two, one, five drop thumb pattern in my YouTube lessons on drop thumb. So if you need to at this point, go back, watch that video, go through the exercises, get started on drop thumb, and then come back to this video before proceeding. Don't frustrate yourself in this process get the basics down, and then be ready to go with the rest of this lesson. Uh, a couple other thoughts here. You want to get that drop thumb note really clean, and one thing you need to do is when your thumb comes down off the fifth string down to that second string, make sure it jumps up over the other strings a little bit. You don't have to swing your thumb way out, but you don't want to just have your thumb going straight down from the fifth string. You're going to trip across the other strings, you may miss the second string altogether. So put a little arc in your thumb movement as it comes down to that second string. I think that'll help you get much cleaner notes. Also, drop thumb is good for doing a few things, a couple things actually. Number one, we can add in a melody note on the offbeat, just like with a hammer or a slide or a pull-off really. But even if we're not gonna play a melody note on the drop thumb, 
It adds more rhythmic complexity and also can put a lot of drive into a song. It's a really great technique to learn. Let's put some drop thumb into Cripple Creek. If we're going to use that 1-2-1-5 pattern exclusively, we need to find a measure in Cripple Creek where the bum and the dit are both on the first string. And this occurs in only two places. The first place is in the very first measure of the A part. We could drop thumb after either the first beat, the first bum, or the third beat, which is the second bum. Which should we do, or should we do both? Well, you could do both. You could do one, you could do the other. But let me make a suggestion here. A very common full measure pattern for drop thumbing is to play a pattern that goes bum ditty, drop thumb ditty. If we want to apply that, let's do the drop thumb after the second bum or on the third beat. So we're going to play bum ditty, drop thumb ditty in that very first measure. Let me play the bare bones, Cripple Creek, A part, and no drop thumb yet. And then the second time through, I'll put that drop thumb into the second bum ditty structure of the very first measure. just a really nice little piece of spice. We don't have to overdo it with drop thumbs, just like with poles and slides and hammers. We don't need to overdo the embellishments. We just need to get them in the right place. Now, if you recall in previous lesson on pull-offs, we already executed a pull on the third beat of that opening measure of the A part, where I played So we already had something going there. We already were putting an uh after the bum there by using a pull-off. So what are we doing now? We've got two options for that. We can do a pull-off there to get the bum a ditty pattern going, or we can use a drop thumb. Both the pull-off on the second string at the third fret and the drop thumb on the first and second string open give us the same notes. Two different approaches to the same notes. It also gives us a little bit of different feeling to the music uh, because we're using a finger and thumb rather than a pull-off. So the, the tone is a little different, but they both work. And so you have options. You can use a drop thumb here or you could use a pull-off. Uh, you try it out and decide which is better for you. It's just a choice. Neither one is inherently better. Well, the second place we can put a drop thumb into Cripple Creek is in the B part. And it's going to be on the second bum ditty of the second measure. Let me play the uh, bare bones B part. Listen for the end of the second measure. We're going to go up to the first string and just play a simple bum ditty. You heard that bum 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 that bum bum bum. That was just a bum ditty on the open first string. So we can drop in a drop thumb after that bum and turn it into a bum ditty. It would go something like this. exercise, I said on that bum ditty on the first string, we could have put a brush on top of that. We can still do that. We can do a drop thumb brush -a. All these different ways of mixing it up and creating variations, you can put it together however you want. So there we have it. Just those two places are where the 1-2-1-5 pattern works in Cripple Creek. In both cases, we're just filling in with an offbeat after the bum. We're not changing the bare bones structure. We're not displacing any melody notes, really. We're just filling in there. Are there other drop thumb possibilities? Well, yes. If we allow ourselves to drop thumb to other strings, strings three and four, we could put other drop thumbs into Cripple Creek. 
but the one two one five pattern is plenty enough for today. Let's just leave well enough alone, and maybe some other day we can explore other ways to drop them in Cripple Creek on different strings. Alrighty, let me play the whole enchilada once again. So I'm going to throw in some drop thumbs, some brushes, some pull-offs, some slides, and hammers as well. I covered that in the last lesson. Put all the spices into it and let her rip. wrap it up. Drop thumb is a great technique for adding both offbeat melody notes as well as creating more rhythmic complexity and drive, sometimes both all at once. If approached correctly, drop thumb is not something special and difficult. It's really just a ditty pattern where we allow our thumb to go to some other string other than the fifth string. The one, two, one, five drop thumb roll or pattern is probably the most common, most used drop thumb roll, and there are a whole lot of players who never play more drop thumb beyond this. That's, that's their go-to drop thumb roll. If you want to explore some of the other drop thumb patterns that are out there, you can check out my second and third video lessons on drop thumb. I go into a couple different patterns. In Cripple Creek, we can play the one, two, one, five drop thumb pattern in the very first measure of the A part, and then we can also put it into the second measure of the B part. It's the only places where it works out because we have to have the bums and the dits just on the first string. Also, drop thumbs and pull-offs can produce the same notes as seen in the first measure of the A part. So you have options. If you don't want to drop them, sometimes you can produce the same notes just by pulling off in the right place. Alrighty, that's it for drop thumb. Next up, we're going to take a little different tack and we're going to explore the concept of less being more where we actually remove some notes from the bare bones structure. So stay tuned for that. And until then, have fun and keep on picking.